You've seen the headlines. Netflix loses subscribers for the first time in 10 years. What does it mean for you? Keep watching. Today, I'm breaking down three big changes that you need to know if you subscribe to Netflix or even if you just use someone else's password. Let's get started. Number one, plans and pricing. And here is a look at Netflix's plans. They range in price from $10 to $20 a month at recording time. The most popular standard is $15.49 per month. And that's more expensive than HBO Max, the Disney Bundle, and other on-demand services. So what's the solution? Advertising. Netflix is planning a cheaper ad-supported plan, but not immediately in the next year or two. It wouldn't replace the ad-free plans, it would be optional. Check out the results of my recent YouTube poll. More than 1,000 people responded, and about 20% said they would be interested in the ad-supported Netflix plan. Another 20% said it depends on the ad load. I think these ad-supported plans are a win-win. They give consumers a way to stream content for a lower price, their choice, and they can also be more profitable for the streaming services. And I thought this was interesting. I just listened in on an investor call for Warner Brothers Discovery and CEO David Zaslav said that the ad light plan has the highest average revenue per user compared to the ad free plan. And that explains how services like Hulu can run Black Friday deals like 99 cents a month for 12 months on a plan that is normally $6.99 per month. It's all about the ads. So I'm curious, how much do you think Netflix's plan with ads will cost? I'm guessing in the $7.99 per month range if the three current plans that are ad free stay at the same price they are today. Moving on to number two, password sharing. And five years after tweeting this, love is sharing a password, Netflix wants you to keep your password to one household only, and a crackdown is likely coming. And I've got a clue to share with you about what Netflix's password crackdown may look like. And that clue comes from Netflix itself. Because in several markets outside the US, the service is offering the option of sub accounts. And this lets users pay extra to add up to two people who they don't live with. Take Costa Rica, for example, those sub accounts would cost an extra $2.99 a month each. And this is for users on the standard and premium plans. Now to be clear, this is only a test and not in the United States at this point. But if Netflix does crack down on password sharing in the US, you know the other services will be soon to follow suit. Number three, content. Netflix is known for shows that are trending today and forgotten tomorrow. They don't have a quantity problem, but quality, well, I'd say so. And this is something that a lot of people, including me, overlooked maybe five years ago, but now there is just so much more competition. Listen now to what Philo CEO Andrew McCollum told me recently. Tell me if you can relate to this. The trade-off with SVOD is that you open up one of these services, you know, like Netflix or something, and you spend like half an hour just trying to figure out what you want to watch. You know, I'd say that me and my wife, when we try to watch something on Netflix, probably at least 50% of the time, we just give up and go to bed. So based on that experience Andrew just described, is the problem low quality content or is it poor recommendations? Maybe a combination of them both. My prediction is that Netflix will experiment with its content release strategy, although I've got nothing confirmed here. As a subscriber, I like having a full season released at once, but there is a downside to that strategy. Because if you binge watch an entire season over a weekend, by the next weekend, you may open Netflix and think, wow, there's just nothing for me here. Other services are having success with more appointment style TV, releasing one episode a week. So maybe three episodes at once, three weeks apart, would work for Netflix. That way, people would actually be talking about some of the higher quality content for a longer period of time before they just move on to the next new thing on Netflix or another service. So what changes do you think Netflix should make? I look forward to reading your comments down below, and I hope to see you back here soon. Thanks for watching.